Here's a little bit of a trading strategy that you guys can use on the ES. So the S&P 500, I really don't talk about it a lot on this channel, but I am going to start branching out into different instruments, going over different chart patterns and different assets to trade. Because again, even though I love to trade the NASDAQ 100, it's not the end all be all. There is other instruments out there, especially when maybe let's say the NASDAQ's not really cooperating or performing and the ranges are very, very big and you're kind of getting chopped out. Where can you kind of look to these other asset classes to maybe potentially make some cash? Now, this is a particular strategy that's not going to present itself each and every single day. OK, and the reason why I want to focus on it with the ES is because the range on the ES is not as large. If you've ever watched price action trade on the ES, it's a lot more slow than the NASDAQ 100. It's a lot more orderly. And again, the ranges aren't as big. However, the risk you can kind of dial into, you know, potentially lose less money than you would trying to risk the same type of setup on, let's say, the NASDAQ 100. So again, the reason why I say that this setup doesn't present itself all the time is because it just quite frankly doesn't. You need some specific event to happen, and that event that you need to happen is going to be what I'm going to show you. What you need to see on the ES is within the first five to ten minutes, you need to see a drastic sell-off or a drastic push higher immediately off the bell. So if I was to look at Friday's price action, at 9.30 in the morning when the market opens, you're going to see a 16 and a half point range downside candle on the ES, okay? So here's what you need to be thinking. Again, because this doesn't set up each and every single day, you're not going to be able to trade this setup each and every single day. So if you're just specifically looking for a strategy that you can use every day and you're going to be able to take multiple setups, this is not it. This is to try to catch one of those big all day moves, even if the market is choppy, you're trying to catch the trend, you're trying to be on the right side. So again, what you need to see is with inside, okay? So if you wanna write this down, go ahead and write this down. But what you need to see is with inside the first five to 10 minutes, you need to see a big push higher, like a big, big green bar or a big, big, big red bar over preferably on the but just based on the es's range preferably over 10 12 points okay and it needs to happen inside of one five minute candle now all we're looking at here on the screen as far as indicators is just a 20 simple period moving average you really don't even need it but again it just kind of helps you you know try to pick your entry a little bit better so what you're looking at is once you get that big sell-off or that big push higher you're going to start to mark out those lows okay now if we get into an area where we kind of push a little higher and then sweep the lows and there's a wick or we never fit or we fail to ever get down and push that that low from the big range candle off the open that's exactly what you're looking for you're going to mark out those lows and you're going to put a stop loss about one point outside that range okay and then what you're looking for is some type of setup, some type of indicator, some type of confluence to get you into the trade. And that can be anything. That can be a green bar taking out a pause candle. That can be a back test up into the range and then a pullback with a higher low. It doesn't really matter. In this particular case, I'm gonna use the 20 period moving average and I'm gonna use a candle that closes over the 20 SMA, which was gonna happen here at 10.05. And then my stop loss is going to go about a point to two points below the low of day. So if I look at this candle that closes over the 20 SMA, that high price is 5,900. The low of day is currently sitting or, or was sitting off the open at 5,886. So we're essentially giving ourselves 15 points worth of risk. Now, for the ES, if we were looking to scalp, I don't really like scalping with stop losses bigger than five, six points max on the ES, but because this is not a scalp and we're looking to try to catch some type of momentum, some type of, you know, consolidation move that comes out of it or some type of trend, we're going to open up that stop loss, but we're going to adjust. Okay. We're going to adjust our contract size so we can be able to withstand a 15 point stop loss. And as soon as we get a candle that kind of confirms over, right, just like a 20 SMA play on the NASDAQ, we're going to get in. Now, again, you're going to get into this trade and it's going to immediately pull back around five points. So just, again, 
have an open mind because this is not a scalp where as soon as you get into this trade, you want it to work immediately. This is a trade where you're going to use a bigger zone or in this case, a bigger key level, right? Which is that opening drive flush. And you're going to use that as your stop. And you're going to just essentially sit in this trade. And what we're looking for is something close to one to one. So if we're going to risk 15 points, we're looking for something close to 15 points. Does it have to be 15 points on the dot on the number? No. You know, can you take 12? Sure. Can you take, you know, a little more? Sure. And if you just look at this play, this play actually would have kept you in here essentially all day long. Now, if you're getting in at a price over 5,900, you know, within an hour's time, we run all the way up to 5,905. So you got about five and a half points here. Then it pulls back. It's kind of holding this 20 SMA. And then in lunchtime, it really starts to push higher and goes all the way up to 5, uh, 59.12 and then 59.14. So this here is your one-to-one. -one. Again, just because you're risking 15 points and you're looking for that one-to-one, -one, again, don't get so fixated on if I'm risking 15 points, I need 15 points exactly. If you can get 12, get 12. If you can get 13, get 13. If you can get 14, get 14. Move your stop up a little bit once you're in that kind of one-to-one -one zone and just let the trade kind of play out. Again, it kind of pulls back a little bit, goes sideways. Again, the market was very, very tricky on Friday. Didn't really do a whole lot. It was an inside bar day overall. So again, sometimes this will you know, give you a 2R. Sometimes it'll give you a 3R. Sometimes it'll just barely give you a 1R like in, in Friday's instance. But this is a strategy that you can kind of look for. So again, what are going to be some of the light bulbs that need to go off is if with inside the first five minute candle or second five minute candle, you get big selling pressure. And in the ES, I needed over 10 points, 10 points, 15 points, somewhere in that range, you know, between 10 and 15 points off the open. And then I'm looking for a strong reversal. Okay, so a strong reversal after that. If, if the price shoots to the high side, I'm looking for that big 10 to 15 point push off the open and then a strong reversal. If you get a sweep of those lows and a drastic wick that closes back inside the range, great. That new wick would become your stop loss one, one point below that. If we never take out the lows, then the low of day candle would be that stop loss about a point under there. And you're going to get into that trade and you're going to target the range of that opening of that opening candle. So in this case, it was around 16 points, 15 points. And you can see here just doing the math, you know, from entry getting in around 10 o'clock up until about a little bit after lunch. It was a three hour hold trade, but for a nice, easy one to one and that one to one being close to around 15 points. So, again, you know, use your discretion, use common sense. You know, don't don't get don't take this trade, be up 11 points and then have it pull back on you to break even and say, man, I never got the one to one. 11 points is good on the ES. You know, 12 points is good on the ES. 13 points is good on the ES. It's going to move slower. It's not going to be for your hyper scalper. It's not going to be for someone who's got ADHD and can't sit, sit still and sit focus. This is a set and forget trade, you know, kind of have those levels up there. I would put price targets at 10 points. I would put price targets at 15 points. If I was looking for, for, you know, 15 points on the take profit side, I'm definitely not going to let something go up 11 points, 10 points, 12 points, and then give it all away. I'm going to lock in something at 10 and I'm going to lock in something at 15. I'm going to lock in something at 20. If it never gets there, fine. But at least I locked out at 10, locked out at 15, so forth and so forth. Help. Hope this helps you guys. If you want to try this out and you guys are looking for evaluation accounts with the prop firm, Apex right now is 80% off with $85 activation fees that link is down in the description box below if you would like to join my community my discord where i have private lessons that are not on youtube an interactive chat uh, during market hours a bunch of learning content and, and just a great overall community that link is also down in the description box below it's a one-time fee again i it, there is a paywall to get in there because i don't want a bunch of unfocused people in there it's a great group of people it's a one-time thing it's not like i'm going to charge you guys monthly or anything for that so if you guys are interested in some higher education and some mentorship some coaching and just overall, you know, looking to make some new trading buddies. Definitely see you guys in the room and I'll catch all of you guys on the next one.